Hi everyone, it's Mrs. Dadswell here and I'm just going to talk you through the PowerPoint that's been shared with you on ePraise this week for English. So you are continuing to look at poems that discuss place in the AQA Power and Conflict cluster and we are moving on this week with Storm on the Island by an Irish poet called Shane Sweeney. Just before I carry on, I want you to um, remember that I'm going to go through this at a pace of me um, just going through the PowerPoint, but you need to stop and start it in order to complete the tasks um, and to continue to get guidance as you go through. So we'll start with the Do Now activity, quite simple. It's have a look at the image in the centre of the screen and I want you to mind map any adjectives you could use to describe how you might feel living here when a storm hits. Have a think about what you can see. Think about the colours in the picture, think about the mood that creates. Think about this house um, that is standing alone, isolated on the island, surrounded by the raging um, waves of the sea. If you are doing the, bronze, the silver or gold challenges for this week, or you just fancy a bit of a challenge to start off with, think about how you're going to protect yourself from the storm. What might you do to prepare yourself emotionally and physically? And what might you have to do to your house or the island or the community to prepare them for an awful storm that's about to come and happen? Learn an objective for this week is to critically explore ideas using precise references to support interpretations. And all this means is you're going to develop an understanding of the poem as you go through the lesson and you need to um, respond to them and explore those ideas um, through the various activities. Um, you're going to be writing um, responses to the quotes that you look at or quotes that you pick out from the poem and you're going to be thinking about what that makes you think as a reader of the poem. So as you go through these statements here, we'll link to bronze, silver and gold challenges throughout. Okay, thinking hard challenge for this week is the link. So in the poems that we've looked at so far, how has nature been presented? So you might think of poems like Exposure or Extract from the Prelude, or Ozymandias, if you've studied any of those poems in class or in previous lessons um, during lockdown. So what ideas have they presented about nature? As you're doing that, I want you to think about any specific quotes that come to mind. So what kind of ideas have the poets presented so far around um, the challenges that nature presents um, or the, the harshness of nature or the effects that nature has on us as humans and how um, the power of nature can easily overcome us as humans. Okay, before we read the poem and before you read through it yourself, it's important that you do some pre-reading around it. So these boxes here provide some basic information around the context of it. What was happening in history at the time? Why did Seamus Heaney feel like he needed to write about this? And what sort of things is he referring to within the poem? What important messages is he trying to get across to the reader? So have a read through this information, and then when you're done, move on to the next slide, which introduces the poem itself. Okay, so one more quick activity before we introduce the poem itself, sorry, got a bit confused there, um, is to make sure that you understand the language that has been used. So look at the table on the slide, Either you can print it off and complete it, or you can do it on um, paper or a notebook that you have at home. So there's a number of words on the left-hand side that I think might be challenging or might be a little bit confusing because you might not know what they mean. So your first activity is to use a dictionary or a website like dictionary.com to find out the meanings of the words. Once you've done that, I want you to copy out the line from the poem. So it says here, quote from the poem, copy out the line that it appears in and then have a think about what it means. What does the quote mean and what's your understanding of it? Once you've done that, you should have a clear um, initial understanding of the poem. So you should be going into it with some sort of idea of what the poem is about. Now we're gonna move on to having a look at the poem itself. Okay, Storm on the Island by Seamus Heaney. I'm gonna read through it with you the first time and then you've got some activities to complete. We are prepared. We build our houses squat, sink walls in rock and roof them with good slate. This widened earth has never troubled us with hay, so as you see, there are no stacks or stucks that can be lost. 
nor are there trees which might prove company when it blows full blast. You know what I mean? Leaves and branches can raise a tragic chorus in a gale so that you listen to the thing you fear, forgetting that it pummels your house too. But there are no trees, no natural shelter. You might think that the sea is company, exploding comfortably down on the cliffs, but no. When it begins, the flung spray hits the very windows, spits like a tame cat turned savage. We just sit tight while wind dives and strafes invisibly. Space is a salvo. We are bombarded with the empty air. Strange, it is a huge nothing that we fear. Okay, look at the purple boxes on the right hand side and have a read through them. So it says, read the poem through slowly once and make some notes around your initial ideas. What is it saying about the island? What is it saying about nature? And what impression do you get as the reader? Once you've done those and answered those basic questions, you need to read through it a second time. So it's not enough to just read through it once. And even when you come to the exam um, with the anthology poems, I would read through them again to remind yourselves of them. But especially when you get to the unseen poems, read through them a couple of times um, to develop um, your ideas or your understanding as you go through it. Once you've done that, I want you to write a short summary of it in your own words, and that's going to help you to be really secure about your understanding of it. If you're struggling or you need a little bit of help or you're still unsure, click this link here and that will take you to a clear explanation of the poem. It reads through the poem again and it um, talks through some of the ideas that are presented in it. Okay. We're going to delve a little bit deeper here and we're going to have to think about the language and structure um, and start to analyse some of the ideas within it. So start off with the language first of all and you need to work through each of these questions on the left hand side. Take it one at a time and as you go through them I want you to write down the answers on your paper um, or if you're doing it on a computer I want you to write down the answers as you go along. I'll give you an example with the first one. So line one says, what does this tell us about the islanders and why? I'm going to read through the line again. We are prepared, we build our houses squat. Think about the language that's been used. Starts off with the word we, it's a collective pronoun. So what is it telling us about the islanders and how they work together? Once you've done that, start to look at some of the other language that's been used. So think about the word prepared. What are the connotations of it? What does it mean? And what does that tell us? And then it talks about building the houses squat. Go back and look at the last activity that you did if you can't remember what the word means. What it, it means about building the houses um, almost small and strong to withstand the storm. So what is that telling us? I want you to go through the rest of the lines that it picks out um, almost to the same level of detail that I just have and you need to be collecting your notes as you go along. Once you've done that, you need to have a look at here on the right hand side and look at the structure. Now, if you want to be accessing the higher levels um, on the mark schemes in the exam, you need to discuss structure as well as language. So it says the poem is written in free verse, which means it's got no rhyming structure. What does it tell us about nature and the weather? So we'll go through this one as an example and then you need to do the rest of it yourself uh, working through them one by one. So if it's written in free verse and it's got no rhyming structure, then it has no control. For me, that's what I'd say. It has no control and we're talking about the storm. If the, sto if the storm can't be controlled and it can't be controlled by the people on the island, then what does that tell us about nature and the strength that nature has? We're talking about the power that it has over the island and the power that it has over the people. What sort of feelings is it going to create and how is it going to leave the people on the island feeling afterwards? Okay, once you've done that, I want you to work through the rest of the questions and see what ideas you come up with. Okay, the silver activate activity is to answer these four questions afterwards. So again, you either need to do it on your computer if you're doing it on your computer or make notes on your paper um, that you are writing on if you're doing it in a notebook or on a piece of paper. 
So what does the speaker say which shows how they are prepared for a storm? Where are the verbs which imply how vicious nature can be? So you need to list them. What are two aspects of nature which have a damaging effect? And I point you towards those lines in the poem. And do you think the speaker likes living on the island and why? And they're going to help you to develop an even deeper understanding of the poem as we go through. Okay, next. So on the next slide, you are asked to complete a table analysing quotes from the poem. The information below will help you if you are unsure of what is required in each column. So I'm just going to flick along to show you what I'm talking about. So we've got this table here and it's basically a piezel paragraph. It's breaking down a piezel or a P paragraph um, that you would normally do in class. Um, if you can't remember what each of those things mean or what each of those things requires, this is the importance of this slide. So it talks you through what each of those things means. So have a read through it before you go back to it. Again, you can complete this on your computer or you can copy it out and complete it on um, your paper. But remember that you're leaving enough room in each of those rows on the table to write your responses. I've included here the evidence, so the quotes from the poem, and I've talked about the techniques. What I want you to do is to think about what the writer is trying to say. I want you to explain what the writer is trying to say. If you are doing silver or gold, I want you to focus on these columns. So I want you to zoom in on um, a technique or a, um, a word from the poem or a phrase from the poem and develop your explanation. If you can think of an alternative interpretation, then that is gonna help you to um, achieve higher on a mark scheme. And if you can link it to another idea within the poem or another quote um, from within the poem, that is also going to help you to achieve higher. Okay. Moving on from that, you are going to turn your grid into P's or paragraphs or analytical paragraphs. This says, using the information you've already found, answer the question, how does Heaney show the speaker's attitudes towards nature? So there's three levels of challenge here. So you've got the bronze challenge, which asks you to complete two full piezo paragraphs. And at a minimum, they must include point, evidence and explain. Then there's the silver challenge, which is complete three full piezo paragraphs. At a minimum, they must include point, evidence, explain and zoom. And the gold challenge is to complete four full piezo paragraphs and they've got to include every step of point, evidence, explain, zoom and link. Here's the help and support if you need it. So the sentence starts for each of those um, stages to the paragraph. You don't have to use them. Um, if you want to come up with your own sentence starters, then you can. If you're aiming for higher um, levels on the mark scheme, then you want to be embedding the quote. So instead of saying, in Storm on the Island, Seamus Heaney presents the idea of nature, so on and so forth, the quote to show this is, you're gonna embed the quote. So you're gonna say, in the quote, we build our houses squat in Storm on the Island, Seamus Heaney presents the idea of. So you're taking out that really clunky sentence starter and you're starting to um, embed it within your response. Again, if you're um, aiming for higher marks in the exam, you might want to include an alternative interpretation in this bit here, the explanation. So this tells us, this shows that he feels and this makes the reader feel because you might want to say alternatively, the reader might um, also feel this and you're going to explain how else the reader might feel. When you get to the Zoom section, you want to be using your terminology. So instead of saying the word or the phrase, you want to talk about the nouns or the adjectives that are in there. Don't forget, you should be getting your terminology in throughout as well. So you want to be talking about similes, or oxymorons that have been used that we've pointed out earlier in the lesson. So if you get a little bit stuck, there's lots of things that can help and support you at this part of the lesson. When you are submitting your work um, to your teacher for this week, it's these paragraphs that you need to be um, submitting for your teacher to look over. So people doing the bronze, 
here um, your teacher is going to expect um, two piece of paragraphs, silver is three piece of paragraphs and gold is four piece of paragraphs. Okay, to end the lesson for the majority of you, this is the plenary. So which poem from your anthology could you compare this to and why? So you might be thinking about the power of nature, the destructive power of nature, how humans can be overcome by nature. If you can think of here any quotes that you could compare, then that's even better and that shows that you are um, achieving a little bit higher in this task. And then an extension challenge. So remember that this is a double lesson. So you, ideally you should be spending two hours on it. If you completed the first part of the lesson really quickly, or you're just looking for um, something to do to extend the learning, then there's this activity here. It's a quotation challenge. So it takes um, the last part of the poem. So the last few lines of the poem and there's four activities. So you need to highlight and label the methods that have been used in the quotation. Um, how might one interpret, this is the context, sorry, this, how might one interpret this poem as an allegory for the troubles in Ireland? So an allegory is like, how does it pay um, homage to um, the troubles in Ireland or how does it refer to them? Um, how does it represent them? Then you've got the zoom in on the phrase task. So zoom in on the bit where it says the flung spray hits, the very windows spits like a tame cat turned savage. What does this simile tell us um, and how does it convey, convey our relationship with nature? And then you've got compare. So if you've studied the, um, the poem, the prelude, um, how is nature, um, how does nature compare in this poem with um, prelude or the prelude? Or if you've studied the poems, um, sorry, let me say that again. If you've studied the poem, The Prelude, how does the power of nature compare in these two poems and what similarities and differences do you notice? If you haven't studied that poem and you've studied another poem like um, Ozymandias, then how does the power of nature compare in these two poems? Okay, I hope you've managed to um, achieve everything that you could have in that lesson and met all the challenges that you could have. And thank you for listening and watching. I hope it has helped you in some way.